35192 if you want to send a text, alancoxshow.com to watch. Thanks, by the way, for our help in the video department. Harold Bedargasump. His hell, B apostrophe. Boy, you don't see that often at all. <laughs> Harold Badargasump. B apostrophe D. Yeah. For, very rare. <laughs> very rare. Badargasump. Mm-hmm. Uh, is helping out today. Thank you. We're going to do a power hour tomorrow as we'll be airing the uh, Guardians game. They're finishing up that series in Kansas City. It's 2 nothing Guardians bottom of the second. Uh, tomorrow, it's uh, we'll roll out about 3.30, so kind of a power hour. You know, in the same way that a happy hour is more than 60 minutes. Right. We'll do power hour tomorrow, Wait, and what? then... Hmm? Yes. <clears throat> well, listen. Is that even legal? We've all seen the signs. Happy hmm. hour, four to eight. Um, I thought it was uh, up for grabs which hour was the happy one. Yeah, well, I think that's up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, people have been told for so long that the customer is always right, that they've come to believe it, even though it's patently false. Uh, so I think that uh, when it comes to a happy hour... You pick which hour you're going to feel. Although I, I would wager that if you're really going to go ham on a happy hour, uh, your happier hours are going to be front loaded. Uh, the back end is probably considerably less happy. But nevertheless, that's all um, immaterial. Tomorrow we will be out of here around 3 30, then your pregame, and then first pitch in Cincinnati. Ted Griffey Jr. of the Cincinnati Reds against your Cleveland Guardians at 4-10 tomorrow. And then the Cavaliers will play the Nets tomorrow night, hoping to get some more uh, postseason action. Um, well, I guess they'll still play again if they lose tomorrow yes, night. They'll they, play on Friday. They got two chances to win one game. There you go. Beautiful. I like those odds. Pretty good odds. Yeah. <laughs> but It's better than the odds for the... Nine, ten teams where they have to win two to get in. Mm-hmm. That's tougher to do. Yeah, it's harder to do. Because of the odds. Numbers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Carlos Carrasco, by the way, has been wearing uh, the number 21 on his cap. as He's uh, one of those uh, Roberto Clemente winners or whatever. You can wear that number on your cap to designate that. And he's been doing that. I, You know, I mean, if that's, I guess, what you want to do. Good for mm-hmm. him. For people who are... Um, Big Roberto Clemente fans, people who want to uh, designate that, why not? Well, he's a pretty big deal. In he is a big Major deal. League baseball and in Pittsburgh, where I had great shows this weekend. Or it was just one show, but it was sold out. You had great show. I had great show. <laughs> great show, sold out, lots of fun. Thanks to everybody in Pittsburgh. What did you do post-show? For Mandy Brothers. Uh, went back to the hotel, because it was... The show started at 9.30. By mm-hmm. the time we were done with like merch and everything, it was 11, almost 11.30. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to go back to my hotel now. So no, You didn't want to be out late. You didn't yeah, want I stopped, to. I did stop at a get-go to mm-hmm. get some food, and it was just a really wild group of people at that get-go at that time of night. Just one dude walking around, white dude. You know, walking around, talking on his speakerphone, using the yes. N-word. Like, where oh. you guys at? Like, And they're <clears> just like, you could tell they didn't want to hang out with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and so he's calling somebody else. He just kept calling people, walking around this get-go, trying to find something to do. And nobody, like, everybody was just like, man, you seem sad. He probably needed a ride. Maybe. Like, I bet I he walked there. Well, your venue, Maybe. though, if you really wanted to take in the sights downtown, your venue is just a hop and a skip right around the corner from the Greyhound bus station. Oh, yeah. You could have camped out down there. Yeah, I didn't need any of that. I just you didn't to... want to go hang out was, at the Greyhound I mean, station? That was a long day for me, so I was happy to just get back to the hotel and chill out and take it easy. Where did you stay? Uh, the AC Hotel. Hey! Oh. <laughs> and, uh, hey. But it was... I wasn't really paying attention when I booked it, so it was like... 25 minutes from downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In but the wrong was, direction? Yeah, kind of. It was yeah. a little bit south, but it's it was a really nice hotel, and it was dirt cheap for it being, like, as nice as it was. I mean, Pittsburgh it was under, hotels are not expensive. I feel like every time I stay there, it's usually pretty cheap. Everything that I looked at that was within the vicinity was, like, 200 bucks. Oh, wow. Oh, so, well, you, you stayed at the one, because there's one downtown. There's an yeah. AC hotel downtown. Yeah, but that one was, like, 200 bucks to stay there. I and see. And the one that I stayed at was, like... You under, were in Cannonsburg. Under 100. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. You just had to drive for a half an hour. You just had to drive for a half an hour. Well, no so wonder you wanted to go back to the hotel. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, but it was a, still, it wasn't that bad of a drive. And mm-hmm. 
Now I know about Cannonsburg. Mm-hmm. Oh, you learned yeah. right there. And it was uh, again for like a, a hotel under a hundred bucks. Super nice. The shower was out of my league. Nice. Mm-hmm. To the point what does where that mean? I didn't know how to. Work you didn't it. feel comfortable waffle stomping mm-hmm. in their bathroom <laughs> in their shower. You can't even waffle stomp because it's not even. It's just got like a the drain. silver. It's just got yeah. the silver plate that just like waterfalls into the drain. So you can't even waffle stomp. You'd have to like it'd be like using a cheese slicer. <laughs> Wait, oh, what? Wow. Ho- hold on. Uh, it has a silver plate that. It's just what? like a silver plate at the bottom of the tub. You've never yeah. seen one like that? It's like I have I them know. in my driveway. There's like grates that are in little yeah. metal oh, oblong okay. things that, you know. What, what I have seen. There's just a little like crack where the water goes down. Mm-hmm. What, what I have seen is like the middle of the floor is kind of like elevated just a bit. And then like it's just lo- uh, the sides are lowered just a bit. And it's then, at a slope so that the water yeah. drains. Yeah, yeah. And then I've seen that like where there's no physical drain in the middle. It all runs to the sides. I've seen that, but I've never seen. Yeah, it. this one is kind of like that, but it just all goes to the front. And there were two shower heads. One was like the the rainfall one. Yeah, and I don't like those. Ooh. I love those. I love really? this. I love those. The ones that hit your body. But then the other one was. I don't like them either. Was the one like it's like uh, on the hose. Handheld. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to turn that one on. But at some point I did. I didn't know it, but it was like facing the wrong way, so it sprayed off the wall and almost hit me. <laughs> so I had to matrix like to dodge this thing. And you're all and, slippery. Yeah, I'm all slippery, and like I'm like, man, that was really poorly designed. Well, usually the ones with the handle have their own little like lever. Yeah, it didn't have on that. the handle. There, there was just there was two. It was like you were trying to drive a boat. Yeah. <laughs> like it was there was just there was two different knobs to turn. And you had to turn one, and then you had to turn the other, and, like, figuring out how to get, how, like, it was just two. I need just one knob. Mm-hmm. One knob, one nozzle, and I'm good. You were like Dylan in Severance, for anyone who's watching Severance. You got I a am. knob in each hand, and you're trying to reach between the two. I haven't gotten that far yet. And that's for five people. Oh, I'm going to get there. Yeah. I'll be one of those five <clears> soon. <throat> I just haven't. I, w- I spent all weekend watching, and I'm not even done with it yet, but the ultimatum. Which is some amazing trash TV. If you like the show Love is Blind. That's a yes. dating show. This takes that show to another level. Because it's just people that go on a dating show. And the dating show is you either get married to me or you date one of these other people on the show. Wait. Do you wait, get to wait, know wait, anything wait. about them? Yes. You have to. So m- much. <laughs> Why, who would opt to marry the person rather than dating a bunch of other people? There's people if you that feel would. a connection. Yeah, like because how, how long do you there. get to determine this? So you show up with someone that you've been dating for like two years. Oh, you and you bring oh, your you yes. got your plus one. Thing. Yes, okay. it's a couple oh. thing, but then you basically break up on the show and then start dating somebody else, and it is some of the craziest because there's so many people on this show that they're just talking about weddings and financial stability, and then they're like in love, I guess. Yeah. It's so crazy to hear the way they're they're talking. But about were these, these people were these people brought onto the show under somewhat false no. pretenses? Okay, I did, no. wouldn't assume so. So you go into this knowing what it is, which yeah. means so, you're about a week away from breaking up anyway. I was exactly. gonna say I'm a little confused. Is this like one of the people in the couple is really pushing for a wedding? Yeah. So, so one like, of the per- people in the couple is giving them an ultimatum. You either propose to me today. Or no, no, not yeah. even propose. We yeah. get married. Well, it's, it's like you have to, they want to ring most of like, I think there's four girls that do the ultimatum and two guys. And they're basically saying, like, we need to get take the next step. You need to propose. We need to be engaged. Mm-hmm. And they do it on the show. And they, like, so then they, they go, well, this is your last night as a couple. Tomorrow you're going to start dating these other couples that are on the show. And so then they all have to choose someone that they like from this group of people, and then they live with that person for a month. This is how badly people want to be on television. This is a mess. There is no show crazy enough where people will go, nah. They'll go, there are, I guarantee you, thousands and thousands of people who tried to get on this show. That didn't get on. That yeah. didn't get on. Yeah. We're seeing the cream of the crop mm-hmm. on these shows. <laughs> Who all voluntarily went in and said, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's do this show where one of us gets boned by a bunch of strangers and the other one really wants to get married. Yeah. Let's go on that show. 
dude, that's like, I don't <laughs> it's even understand. It's insane. I can't even. They, so like Alan said, they can't be happy to begin with, right? The couples who are going in. I feel like no one's who, no one whose relationship is in crazy good shape is going on a show like this. Right, no but they're, they're like, look, we're almost going to break up. Let's just try to get on let's this show. It out, yeah. Make ten thousand dollars. We'll eventually <laughs> yeah. go our separate ways, and we'll both make a little bit of money. Yeah, okay. We'll part as friends, maybe. Wait, do you make money, or is it just you get to find love? You get to find love. Oh, so there's not so even you, money. No, no, you get. There might not I mean, be a grand prize, paid, but you're but paid yeah. as long well, as you're yeah. on the yeah. show. I mean, and so there's these people that are like learning about these other and, and I don't want to spoil things because there's just so much stuff that you're just like wow I didn't see that coming I didn't see just how fast these people will abandon someone that they say they love that so they want to marry yeah. yeah oh my goodness it's, I didn't see that coming yeah. but I did see her coming right. yeah. I heard it I saw it and now I gotta leave the show thanks guys what a mess yeah I didn't watch anything like that I watched mm. it Chapters one and two. Dude, I was laughing and I almost took a photo, but I was like, who cares? But um, it just cracked me up. We were going through, you know, when you're on, if you have Roku, it's constantly suggesting things for you off to the side in the sidebar on various. And there was a movie where like, oh, there it is. Like, I don't know if it hurt us talking or what, (laughs) but it suggested the Bill Murray Garfield movie. And I was like, oh, maybe my daughter would like to watch this. And then I forgot she wasn't even at home. But I clicked on it, and it, ta- it takes parody. you to Tubi, right? Which, like, this is this free movie channel, but it's got a bunch of um, a bunch of commercials in it. That's the trade-off. And it was showing a list of kids' movies. And it was your standard kitty fair. It was a big, mm-hmm. fat liar and all that stuff. Yeah. And then it had it in the <laughs> right middle. There. It's yeah. like, that's got kids in it. Sure. That's all the algorithm needed. This one's got kids Child in it. Child actors. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So, so it's like, it... Garfield 2, yeah. you know, that was a the tale album. of two kitties. There you go. Aww. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was in a real weird mood where I just wanted to watch a scary movie. I never am like that. You guys know how Dude. I'm always like, no, 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 no. I don't think I, I can't remember the last time I watched a scary movie alone. It because Not because I'm scared, but I just don't like stuff that jumps out at you. It was jumpy. Yeah. yeah it's not like a gory, like, scary no. movie. And the cast is good. It, and was, it was great. I loved it. My uh, my boyfriend's like, are you sure you want to watch? You're the, not a big horror fan. This is the original it? No, or the no, new, no, the, no. New, the new one. Okay. The new one. Bill Chapter Hader one and, and James yeah. McAvoy. Okay. Well, the, there's one and two. Yeah. I like the second one got to me more than the first one did because it so heavily revolves around like childhood trauma. Because they're all grown ups. <laughs> yes, yeah. These adults trying to work through it. And I was like visibly more into the second one. My brother's like, Are you okay? I was like, I really connect with these characters. Oh, good God. <laughs> Can you just enjoy the movie and not try to emulate it? <laughs> but it was great. They were really good. And now, the like, movie was emulating her. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I might be becoming I might be becoming a horror fan. I don't know. But the more of these... You did say horror. No. Oh, you horror. heard me right the first time. I'm becoming a horror fan. Because <laughs> uh, if it's... You're going to become a horror fan. I will show you the ropes. Yeah? Yeah. I got I got two experts. One for horrors <laughs> and one for horrors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I don't think... Um, yeah, that's it. I never watched the chapter two. It was great. I heard it's good. I just never got around to watch it. Because it's, it's also one of the things like... <laughs> watch it by yourself is not as fun. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, you, you would go to a movie by yourself. Yeah, yeah I would go, but I, it's not in the theater anymore. I missed it in the theater, so mm. I'll, I'll get around to it at some point. So based on watching it, you've concluded you might be, because I wouldn't consider that to be representative of modern horror it fare. It probably isn't, because, yeah. I mean, I read a lot of... You mur- like suspenseful movies. I think that's what it is. There you I go. read a lot of murder books. And watching it, obviously, Stephen King wrote the book first, but it's like you could see how well written the book was in the movie. And I don't know if that's just because they did a really good job adapting the movie. Better than that miniseries in the 80s. When I was a kid, when it was on television, it was like, you didn't realize how funny it was until later on. You're like, oh my God, this is terrible. (laughs) It's like, so bad. Yeah, Yeah, so bad. But I think that's what I enjoyed the most was almost watching the movie and I was like I could I felt like I was watching one chapter at a time where I'm like oh you can see how this would have been described mm-hmm. in the book and I really enjoyed that so I was like maybe maybe I'm more into horror and I finished a book on vacation that was like a really good murder book that had like a supernatural element to it that I was like man I can feel myself kind of tiptoeing into this genre a little bit well, and what? They just announced that the dude to play Pennywise is going to play some other... Uh, he's going to play the crow. Oh, They're yeah. They're rebooting the crow, so Pennywise is going to be the crow. I'm like, like come movie. on, man. 
You looked at uh, Brandon Lee and said, who can we get that's really like Brandon Lee? I know, Bill Skarsgård. Skarsgård. We'll put him in there. I mean, he's got a wild look to him, but I mean. He's hot. He's kind of hot. He really is hot. I All the Skarsgård brothers could get it. I was looking him up after we watched the movie because I'm like, I wonder what this guy looks like like without the lazy eye and makeup, you know? And um, I watched his Conan interview and I was like, this guy's pretty good looking. And then to see him so creepy, yeah, they kind of good pudding Well, because there are the Skarsgårds and mm, then there are the, the Sarsgårds. Like yeah. Peter Sarsgård yeah. is not related to the Skarsgårds. Who's the dad? I like the Bill. What's his Stellan name? Skarsgård. Stellan. He's in some of the Marvel movies. And, he yeah. played Bootstrap Bill in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Okay. <laughs> yep. And then Bill Skarsgård mm-hmm. is uh, Pennywise. And then there's Alexander Skarsgård. He was Randall Flagg in the, if you watch The Stand that they redid a while ago, speaking of Stephen King. And he was on True Blood, right? True Blood. He's going to be... He's, he's, he's in a movie called The Northman coming out that looks really cool. That they have been trying to make into a movie star. Yes. Like in the same way they did with Jax from... Yep. Uh, from uh, with Charlie Hunnam, yeah, Charlie, Charlie yeah. Hunnam, where they mm-hmm. just can't get it to catch on. Or who's the one that he's the from Skeet John Ulrich of 2022? Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. Taylor Kitsch. They yeah. kept trying to push that guy, and everybody's like, they're nah. trying to make these guys stars, and they're they're trying to make his scars guard a stars guard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's a good looking dude. He's a, he's a tech billionaire on this show, Succession on HBO. For people who watch that, um, yeah. But yeah, you know. Scar, scar, scar. <laughs> just fun <laughs> to say. The but dad, yeah, he's the bad guy in the girl with the dragon tattoo. The dad, yeah, uh-huh. in the original one, I think. Uh, no, the one that just came out a few years ago. Oh, really? The Daniel Craig one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh, they're all Swedish, so that's why like, I thought he was. Two years hot. ago was like ten. Was like yeah, 10 years it was. Years yeah, ago. It was. <laughs> I, and I only know that because I just saw something that was raving about it on TikTok, and I was like. Oh, I thought that movie came out four years ago. Yeah, right. But nope, it, it was like 2010. Well, because I was obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean, my giant Depp face. And so I looked up Bootstrap Bill back then with like Bootstrap Bill no makeup. And I was like, man, this guy's kind of hot. Why am I into... Because he's not a traditionally good looking guy. That's Stellan Skarsgård. Skarsgård. Because Scar- Scar- he's Swedish. He's like there's an older Swedish about, dude. Yeah, but and, there's yeah. something about him where he's got that like... He's something about him is real hot. Oh, well, 2011 was the reboot of The Girl with the Dragon okay, Tattoo. Holy yeah, cow. It's been a while. And they did a pretty good job because that original one's good. real good. I thought it was good. And then they never finished the series, though. Right. They kind of left it open ended. Well, because I think that they did a second one, but I don't think people really cared that much about that one. But I don't think it had the same cast, did it? Yeah, I thought it did. Okay. It was Rooney Mara and okay, it was, I, uh, uh, I thought, somebody else. Stellan Skarsgård. Yeah. So. Um, oddly hot. Oddly hot. Right. Hmm. You're asking me. Oh, I, I mean, he's that. a he's a he's um when you I think need because he's so big when you need like because he was Baron Harkonnen in, in the Dune reboot. Yeah. So if you need somebody who's imposing, yes. he's an incredible actor, older too. and you know, yes. he's um, intense. What what if he, you like people that have the tiny O over their name mm-hmm. in letters, you know. <laughs> He was in Angels that's and Demons too. He and he was, was like on the... Entourage too. He's the director. Yeah. When like Fire Jumpers or whatever Something it's called, stupid, Smoke yeah. Jumpers. He was the he was the professor buddy in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A hundred years ago. Wore scarf, I think. Mm-hmm. And scarf, he was scar. Yeah, scar, scar. <laughs> <laughs> Does your neck ever get cold? But you, your scarf isn't large enough, and you're worried it's going to get caught on something and unravel. Then get Stellan Skarsgård <laughs> scarf guard. <laughs> Keeping your scarf now available safe. exclusively at IKEA. <laughs> he was in that uh, HBO Chernobyl miniseries too. You know yes. where Pound Cake wants to go vacation. visit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a good series. When I was Chernobyl over, was great. It's taken over by Russia now. I can't. Oh, yeah, they're talking about how these Russian dopes were, like, taking uh, souvenirs from Chernobyl. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, you know that you're taking radiation with you wherever you go, right? It's like... Yeah, I got something in my front pocket for you. <laughs> yeah. Why do I have four testicles? I've got to take a break. If you want to text for something, 35192, um, alancockshow.com, you want to watch. On the way back, I will have tickets for you if you're a fan of comedian Tim Dillon. He's doing MGM Northfield Park in a couple of Sundays, the 24th of this month. So if you want to see him, I'll hook you up coming back.